of August? July. July. I don't know if it was the 14th or the 15th. Um, one of those two days. But we had went out and we stopped there just real quick on the way back. And we were there not very long. But that time I saw a picture of his wife and one of his kids. And I remember thinking to myself, like, wow, she's so beautiful. And I like took a step back and I was just like, this man has a gorgeous house. He has beautiful babies. He has a beautiful wife. He has an awesome job. Like, why would he want to leave this? And I remember talking to him about it. And that was the first time that I tried to actually say, what do you think about not separating from your wife? Like, what if you really try to work on this? And he had expressed to me that we've tried to work on this and it's not working. So that is why we're separating. And I spent some time, like, just, you know, kind of, because it, it almost made me feel bad where I was like, to... it got her to a point where she felt bad, but clearly it wasn't bad enough, as we have seen in text messages during that time period. We will look further into this interview and what has stood out to me most. Additionally, we will dive deep into the digital information from Chris's phone. Their stories continue to be proven false and for what reason? It's the little things and it all takes me back to part two and now what we will be discussing in Hidden Motives part five. Was this a planned out crime that both parties had considered yet only one jumped at the opportunity to carry it out? Will this explain different reactions and responses? Will it put to rest some of the speculations on both families? Will this spotlight land on others or right back on the two that it's never left? Join me as we reset and take a look at this case from an entirely different lens and focus on a very real possibility. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss the full premiere of Hidden Motives Part 5, When Civil Turns Criminal.